ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد we always begin our khutbah with this ayah from surah an-nisa and it is something that is from the sunnah of our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he would typically begin his sermons with uh, this khutbah al haja that is called and included in it is the first verse of surah an nisa and this verse goes as follows ya ayyuhan nas o ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o you who believe ittaqullaha haqqa tuqati fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ittaqullaha fear allah azza wa jal who created you from a single soul and from that soul created its mate and wattaqullaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham fear allah so it's repeated twice in the verse fear allah in whose name you ask each other for what you want and also have taqwa of arham wattaqullaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham now this ayah has caused our scholars to try to interpret what does it mean that Allah is saying fear the arham wattaqul arham what does it mean to have taqwa of arham and what is arham arham is the plural of rahim and rahim translates as quite literally the womb you call the womb of a woman you call it ar rahim but of course there is a deeper connotation and that is the connotation of family the connotation of family the arabic word for family and for kinship is ar rahim from the word for womb because obviously all members of a family they go back to one person or one couple every tribe every group of cousins and second cousins and third cousins eventually they all go back to one womb and so the concept of family in arabic comes from the word womb ar rahim and allah says in the quran have taqwa of allah in whose names you ask th- things for and have taqwa of arham what does it mean to have taqwa of arham our scholars have said this verse can be understood in one of two ways number 1 allah is saying have taqwa of allah in whose name you ask people to give you things <coughs> meaning what you say i ask you by allah help me by allah i ask you to help me and in the name of the family you ask people to help you so this means you will go to your brother your cousin you will say for the sake of family we are brother we are cousin i need your help so allah is reminding that the family unit takes care of each other Another interpretation is be conscious of the rights of Allah and be conscious of the rights of the family. Have taqwa of Allah and have taqwa of the rights of the family. And both of these interpretations are valid in uh, the Quran and what they imply is that the family has a high privilege second to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all know in the Quran that Allah puts the rights of the parents after Allah. This is true. But the reality is that the rights of the family come after the rights of Allah and within the family the parents have the most right. So in the Quran you will find verses that it's Allah and then the parents but you will also find verses that it's Allah and then the family and there's no contradiction because who deserves the most amongst the family it is the parents for example in surah uh, uh, al-baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa id akhadha Allahu mithaqa bani israil remember when Allah took the covenant with the children of Israel what was this covenant what was this covenant that they worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they be good to their parents wa bi dhil qurba and their family 
وَالْيَتَامَى and the orphans وَالْمَسَاكِينَ and the poor in Surah An-Nisa the exact same thing وَعَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَمْ The same essential commandment that Allah has commanded you to worship Him alone and don't associate partners with him. That you be good to your parents and to the relatives and the orphans and the poor and the close neighbors and the far neighbors and the companions and the traveler. And the verse goes on and on. Notice, Allah mentions family before even mentioning orphans. Allah mentions family before even mentioning the fuqara and masakin. Worship Allah, be good to parents and fulfill the ties of the family. And be good to the orphans. And be good. So notice where does family come? After Allah and the parents comes the family. And as we said, the family includes the parents. And in fact, we learn from the seerah of the Prophet wasallam that in reality, this is of the very earliest commandments. Amr ibn Abbas came from Yemen to Mecca. And... He was searching for the truth, and it's a long story, we mentioned it in the seerah. This is before the Prophet ﷺ began preaching publicly. And he heard that there's somebody hiding in Mecca, or hiding means he's not public, not hiding that he doesn't, the people don't see him, that he's not public in his message, that is preaching a separate message. And so Amr ibn Abasa, he found out who the Prophet ﷺ was, and he went up to him and he said, What are you, ma'ant? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Ana Nabi, I am a Nabi. So he said, Wama Nabi. What is a Nabi? He's never heard of a Nabi. So the Prophet said, Arsalanillah. Allah has sent me. Allah has sent me. And uh, the Prophet uh, and the Amr ibn Abbas has said, What has Allah sent you with? What has Allah sent you with? So the Prophet wasallam said, Arsalanillah. Allah has sent me with what? Number one. That we worship him alone and we destroy idols. And number two, that we fulfill the ties of kinship with bir and ihsan. This was the only commandment at this point in time. There's no other commandment. There is no salah and zakah. There is no hajj. What has Allah sent me with? Number one, that he be worshipped alone and no idols. And number two, that we be good to silatul arham. That we be good with those of our kinship and our ties of relationship. And if you see how clear this understanding was, when you look at other incidents of the seerah, when the Muslims migrate to Abyssinia, and the Negus calls Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, and he says, what is your message? What has the Prophet told you? And once again, we find the same paragraph. He has sent us to worship one God and to avoid false gods and to be good to our family and to speak the truth. And it goes on and on. But the second commandment was Silatul Arham. The same goes in front of the emperor of Rome, the Roman emperor. When he hears of the Prophet wasallam, and he calls Abu Sufyan and he says, what does he teach you? What is the Prophet's message? And Abu Sufyan at the time was not even a Muslim, but he knew what the message of Islam was. He said, he is teaching us to worship one God and to be good to our family. Look at how the message of Islam was perceived by the early converts and even by the early rejectors. Both Ja'far and Abu Sufyan. Ja'far is an early convert. Abu Sufyan at the time is an enemy. The both of them summarized Islam with the same paragraph. Worship one God and be good to the Silatul Arham. And Silatul Arham, as we, as we said, it means to be good to the entire family, not just parents, siblings, cousins, uncles and aunts, and the extended relatives. And the, in fact, the concept of fulfilling the ties of kinship is so strong that Allah commands the early Muslims to guard the relatives more than to guard the relationship with the Muhajirun and Ansar, which is the highest status of the Sahaba. Allah explicitly says that the family ties are even stronger than the ties of the Muhajirun and the Ansar and your love for them. Imagine that. The family unit and the family ties are stronger than the love we should feel for the Muhajirun and the Ansar. And Allah mentions this in multiple verses in the Quran of them. 
in Surah Al-Ahzab, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, An-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum wa ulu al-arhami ba'duhum awla bi ba'din fi kitab illahi min al-mu'minina wal muhajirin. The Prophet wasallam is closer to the believers. He cares more about the believers than they care about themselves. In other words, the Prophet wasallam cares more about you than you care about yourself. And his wives are their mothers. وَأَزْوَاجُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضُ Family members, they have to have stronger ties with one another than even the mu'mineen and the muhajireen should have ties with them. Now, the context of the verse is primarily about inheritance, primarily, but the wording is very clear. The family unit is supposed to have very strong ties. And I already mentioned that in Arabic, the word for family comes from the word for ru womb, and that is ar rahim. But all of you also know when you hear the word rahim, that another thing comes to mind, and that is the concept of mercy. Rahima. Ar-Rahman, it is from the same root, and this is not a coincidence. In a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah created the creation, and He finished creating the creation, Ar-Rahim stood up. Now, how could the womb stand up? How could the family stand up? This is from Ilm al-Ghayb, we do not know. The family, the concept of family stood up. Ar-Rahim stood up. And here we translate Ar-Rahim as the concept of family. Family stood up and family said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the time now to seek refuge in you and to get the status that I deserve. What is the status I have? So when Allah created the creation, everything has been created, family stands up. However, we don't understand how. And family, the concept asks Allah, now that I've been created, I want to know my maqam. What is my maqam in your eyes? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aren't you content that I shall associate with those who associate with you? Asilu man wasalaki. The Arabic is very powerful. Whoever associates with one's family, I shall associate with them. And aqta'u man qata'aki. Whoever breaks away from their family, I shall break away from that person. Aren't you happy? Aren't you content that I shall be associating with those who associate with you? Whoever fulfills the ties of family, I shall be with that person. And whoever breaks off the ties of family, I shall break off from that person. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim, the most authentic book of hadith. What a powerful Hadith and what a dangerous warning to those who cut off the ties of the family. In a similar version, uh, slightly different, uh, in Sunan al Tirmidhi and others, uh, the hadith goes as follows that the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the Prophet says that Allah says, Ana Allah wa Ana Rahman. I am Allah and I am Ar Rahman. And I created the Rahim. An, wa Ana Rahman khalaqtu Ar Rahim. So there is a, a clear usage of the term Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. I am Ar-Rahman and I created the family and I derived my name from the Rahim. Shaqaqtu laha isman min ismi. So from the concept of family, Allah is saying, I derive my name Ar-Rahman. In other words, the name of Rahman and the concept of family are linked together, not just linguistically, intentionally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word for family and the most powerful name of Allah after Allah is the name of Rahman. And Allah says, my name is Ar-Rahman, and from Ar-Rahman I created Ar-Rahim, and from Ar-Rahim I extracted my name. In other words, the two are linked together. Family and Ar-Rahman are linked together. And that is why in the same hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever connects with Ar-Rahim has connected with me, Ar-Rahman. And whoever cuts off from Ar-Rahim has cut off from me, Ar-Rahman. So if you want the Rahmah from Rahman, you have to be connected to the Rahim. And if you don't want the Rahmah from Ar-Rahman, then cut off from the Rahim. This is what the Hadith is saying. If you want Allah's Rahmah 
You have to be connected to the Rahim. Silatul Arham. The concept of connecting with your kinship. And in fact, cutting off from one's family is one of the very few acts in the Quran that brings about Allah's la'na. Allah's la'na is the most severe punishment. It is worse than Allah's adab. Not everybody who suffers adab is under Allah's la'na. Hear me carefully. Not everybody who suffers adab is under Allah's la'na. Because there will be many who will undergo adab but then be forgiven after that. There will be many who will be punished in Jahannam and that is Allah's adab. But then they will be forgiven and they will enter Jannah. But there is a category that is worse than Allah's adab and that is Allah's la'na. And Allah's la'na is the ultimate punishment. Who will be given to? Well, the Quran mentions around a dozen or so, just a dozen. And one of them, one of the categories upon whom Allah's la'na is given is the one who cuts off the rahim. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاقِهِ وَيَقَطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ اللَّعْنَةُ وَلَهُمْ سُوءُ الدَّارِ The ones who break off Allah's covenant. So to commit the major sins our scholars have said. And the ones who cut the ties that Allah has commanded them to fulfill. وَيَقَطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ and this is the family. So the one who cuts off the ties of the family and the one who spreads facade in the world, he spreads evil in the world, he's genocide and evil in the world. These are the three people Allah says, They have Allah's la'na and they shall have the worst abode in the hereafter. So of the people whom Allah has cursed in the Quran, is the one who cuts off from the family. Now the question arises, what does it mean to fulfill the ties of kinship? What does Silatul Arham mean? The Quranic term and the Hadith term is Silatul Arham. And by the way, I gave a khutbah here recently. What is the very first khutbah that our Prophet ﷺ gave when he entered Medina? I gave a whole khutbah about that. That the Prophet ﷺ said that, O oh people, spread the salam and feed the hungry. Wasilul Arham. And be connected to your relatives and feed uh, and, and pray when everybody is asleep, you shall enter Jannah in Salam. Notice of the earliest commandments, even in Medina, was Silul Arham, Silatul Rahim. What does it mean, Silatul Rahim? Sila and Wasala means to connect. Wasala means to connect. And Ar Rahim, as we said, means the family. So Silatul Arham means to remain connected with your extended family in a manner that is acceptable and according to the culture of one's time. So what this means is that you are in touch with your family. It means that you are showing them love, you're showing them kindness, you're showing them concern. It means that you're aware of what's going on. Uh, of the, uh, uh, one of our scholars of the past said that giving salam to your relatives is of the acts of Silat or Raham. Simply giving salam. And of course in those days there was no phone. So giving salam is you have to visit them. So visiting your relatives is of the highest acts of Silatul Arham. Simply going out of your way to visit your relatives is an act of Silatul Rahim. And of course in our times we have Alhamdulillah the phones and the WhatsApp and the messages and Facebook. Being connected with one's relatives is a sign of Iman and it is a part and parcel of what all of us are commanded to do. Now the question also arises to what level is Silatul Arham necessary and mandatory? And the response comes that the Sharia ah did not come with a specific code and guidelines. The Sharia ah came with general rules. And this varies from culture to culture and time to time and place to place. Obviously, our connections to our brothers and sisters, our blood brothers and sisters, should be much stronger than our connection with our first cousins. And our connection with our first cousins is stronger than our connection with our second cousins. And it is human nature that after a while you lose track of your third and fourth cousins. This is all something that is understandable. But definitely, our actual siblings, brothers and sisters, they have the most right over us after our parents and their children and our first cousins and generally every Every one of us is aware of our first cousins. We know all of our first cousins, no matter how many we have, generally we're aware of them. There should be a contact, there should be uh, uh, the occasional phone call, there should be the invitation over to happy occasions, which is what uh, culturally is accepted and the norm. And many of us are aware of 
a good quantity of second cousins as well. And again, the second cousin is not like the first cousin. But the point is that as the strength of the relationship is stronger, so too the Silat al-Rahim should be stronger as well. And of the greatest acts of Silat al-Rahim is to take care financially of our family and extended family, those that are in need. If you have anyone in your extended family, your cousins, your second cousins, your third cousins, if you have anybody who is deserving of charity, then find them and give them money over anybody else. In a hadith, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that giving to the poor is sadaqah but giving to the relatives is both sadaqah and silat rahim reported in anisa'i giving to the poor is sadaqah that's good give to the poor but giving to ulul qurba the, the 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 family this is both sadaqah and being good to your family and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran and with this verse we always conclude the khutbah. What is the last verse everybody says around the world? Inna Allah ya'muru with, with what? Bil adli wal ihsani. What's number three? Wa ita'i dhil qurba. Giving money to the relatives. Allah is commanding you to give money to your relatives who need money. So especially when it comes to sadaqah, even when it comes to zakat, and you don't have to tell your cousin, your second cousin, you're giving zakat. And it is not just permissible, it is mustahab to give your extended family your zakat and your sadaqah. Now you cannot give zakat to your mother and father, but you can give zakat to uh, your, your siblings and your cousins and your aunts and uncles. Uh, the general rule is you can give zakat to them, but not to your mother and father and not to your son and daughter. But other than this, yes, you may give zakat and of course you can give sadaqah to everyone. So, Silatul Arham means to show love, to show kindness, to show compassion, to be in touch with them, to invite them for one needs to be invited, to uh, visit them uh, whenever possible, and to help them financially. How far back does Rahim go? Well, there is no limit in the end of the day. Every one of us is connected with everybody else. And I want everybody to let that point sink in, even though we know it. But every person you meet in this whole world, even your worst enemy and your best friend and your acquaintance and your colleague, at some point in time, the two of you shared the same womb. At some point in time, there was one person in the womb of a mother, in the womb of a woman, and the both of you are linked to that person. At some point in time, every one of us is linked to one another. Another. So there is no technical term that after the third cousin it is cut off. In fact, in a very powerful hadith, a very strong, uh, a beautiful hadith, our Prophet ﷺ predicted to the Muslims, "Innakum sataftahuna Misr." You are going to conquer Misr. You're going to conquer Egypt. This conquering took place. 10 years after the Prophet died, but he predicted it. Innakum sataftahuna Masr. You're going to conquer Masr. And the hadith goes on until he said, When you conquer it, fa'ahsinu ila ahliha. Be good to the people whom you conquer. Fa'inna lahum dhimmatan wa silatan. Because they have dhimma status, they have protection status, and they have family status with you. Now, what? has the Egyptian family status got to do with the Qurashi and the Arab family status? Hundreds of generations ago, who is the mother of the Quraysh? It is Hajar. And where is Hajar from? Hajar is from Egypt. But this is thousands of years ago. Like literally, we don't even know the number of ancestors. And yet our Prophet ﷺ said, they are related to you, their blood. They're your blood. Think about that. The Arab race at the time of the Prophet and the Egyptian race have a different language, different civilization, different religion, everything is different. They don't even look the same. Nothing is the same. Thousands of years have gone by from Hajar. But what did our Prophet say? Remember, they are in the end of the day your extended family. So there is no limit to when it comes to extended family, but obviously the point being that the closer people are, then uh, the better and the stronger those ties uh, should be. And a practical advice, brothers and sisters, and I speak from my own experience here, and it is a very, very healthy and a very interesting and a very Islamic project that it is, I advise all of you to chart out your own relatives and your own uh, family background, to chart out your own family tree, and to discover uh, who your ancestors were and how you are linked with your extended family. This is a project that will increase 
increase your own appreciation of your heritage and it will bring family together. You will be amazed, you will caught up a third cousin you never knew existed. And as soon as you tell him, oh I am so and so, the son of so and so, the grandson of so and so, we are linked like this, all of a sudden barriers are, 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 are you know, uh, broken, doors are opened up and you connect with family and you feel a part of family. And I speak from my own experience having done this for the last six or seven years and it is a project that has brought me closer together with my extended family and every one of us should do this. In fact, this is what the Sahaba advised. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, Ta'allamu ansabakum, learn your genealogies, learn your family trees, so that will help you to fulfill the ties of kinship. And amongst the Arabs at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it was considered to be a very noble uh, science to know family history and genealogy. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was respected amongst the Muslims and non-Muslims of his time because he knew the genealogy of all the Arabs. You could ask him of any two Arabs and he would be able to connect them no matter how many generations back it went. And it is amazing that to this day, especially the tribe of Quraysh, you know exactly how any two Qurayshis are linked together uh, when you go back to the books of Sirah. Any Qurayshi with another Qurayshi, they have preserved their uh, lineage and their history. But in our times, of course, all of this is now becoming a lost science. Nonetheless, we should keep it alive, especially brothers and sisters. We have broken away from our extended families back home and we're starting new families over here in America who don't even know, maybe even your first cousins, your children have no idea who they are. So it is your responsibility to pass that knowledge down and to keep it preserved. And this is of the ways we will come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, Allah says in the Quran, Give the rights due to your family and give the rights due to the miskeen and to the wayfarer. That is the best thing to do if you want the pleasure of Allah. And those are the true winners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those winners. Barakallahu wa rakum fi Quran Azim. Wa nafani wa yakum bima fi ma atiya wa dhikr al hakim. Aqulu ma tasma'un. Wa astaghfir Allah Azim ali wa lakum. وليس المسلم لكل ذنب فاستغفره إنه هو الغفور الرحيم استغفر الله الذي لا إله إلا الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد Brothers and sisters, every one of us, without exception, has certain members of our family who are problematic to deal with. And this is the reality of human existence. Sometimes we feel, oh, only I have that weird uncle or that harsh cousin or that demeaning aunt. No, every human being is tested with family members that are problematic to our sanity, our calmness. This is the reality. And Allah says in the Quran, we have made groups of you to be tests to others. We made groups of you to be tests and difficulties to others to see who amongst you will be patient. And no doubt, brothers and sisters, that in dealing with such difficult family members, our Iman will be tested. One of the biggest tests of this life is to deal with difficult family members because we are battling between our egos and submission to Allah. Really that's as simple as that. It is our ego. My uncle said this, I'm not going to forgive him. My cousin did this at the wedding, I'm never going to say salam to him again. This is my ego speaking. And we know the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to family. And it's very difficult to battle one's ego when it comes to the family issues. But this is where Iman is demonstrated. Now, no doubt, caveat here, no doubt, if a family member is physically harmful to you, we're not asking you know, anybody to get physical harm. And no doubt, some family members are psychologically so traumatic that it will affect your Iman or you feel you will not be able to control your temper. So in those cases, when it's psychological, it's uh, no doubt that you need to act wisely and perhaps not expose yourself to a situation where you will fail. But even if you decide that there's a psychological trauma, you don't want to be with this family member, then make sure that that is a temporary intention. You are not allowed to boycott for more than three days and boycotting is salam. And in your heart, make it your desire that inshallah I will heal this over time. Some practical advice, what to do with difficult family members. Five simple pieces of advice. Number one, number one, 
think long and hard about the source of the problem and remind the source of the problem, meaning your ego is what I'm trying to say, not the actual incident that happened because always these incidents happen. And remind yourself that the test is not to prove yourself in his or her eyes. The test is to prove yourself in the eyes of Allah. The test is not to come out looking the winner or the loser when it comes to your relative. The test is to come out the winner when it comes to Allah on Judgment Day. Remind yourself of the verses of the Quran, of Silatul Arham, of the hadith of the Prophet about the concept of family and ask yourself, don't you want to come out the winner on Judgment Day? Number two, give any problem some time. Time heals all wounds. Time heals all the wounds. This is of the facts of life. No matter how bitter and angry you are with your cousin today, inshallah, one year from now it won't be that bad. Two years from now it will be even better. So give it some time. And it is of the greatest, it is of the greatest ironies of life for some bizarre reason that at times of weddings when everybody should be happy, family strife comes up and perhaps the worst arguments take place. And it is of the greatest ironies of life that at the time of death, Families are mended together and wounds are healed. This is of the sunnat Allah fi khalqi. But why should we wait for death? And what if the person you're angry with dies? Don't wait for a janazah to heal wounds with members of a family. Number three. Number three, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften your heart and the family member whom you're having a problem with. Ask yourself this. If you cannot even make dua to Allah to wound the hearts, then you really don't want Silatul Arham. Really, it's that simple. If you cannot raise your hands to Allah and say, Oh Allah, soften my heart and soften his heart so that we come brothers again, cousins again, uncle and nephew again. If you cannot even raise your hands to Allah and nobody's hearing you, this is in the privacy of your house, and you say, Oh Allah, cleanse my heart and his of any animosity, any jealousy. Let us be friends as we used to be. Let us be friendly as we used to be. If you cannot even make dua to Allah, then Wallah, you do not want Silatul Arham. So don't kid yourself and don't fool yourself that somehow he is the worst of the two. Even if he is, what do you lose by raising your hands up to Allah and saying, Oh Allah, guide him and guide me to be close again. What do you lose? And remember what Allah says in the Quran regarding the pagans of Mecca and the Muslims when they embraced Islam, the pagans of Mecca and the Quraysh, when they embraced Islam, what does Allah say? You could never have imagined that you would be friendly with those people. لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ If you spend the entire money in this world, you wouldn't have brought those hearts together. But Allah was the one who brought those hearts together. So of the names of Allah, يَا مُؤَلِّفَ الْقُلُوبِ Oh, who brings the hearts together? So make dua to Allah with the name Ya Mu'allif al qulub and that Allah joins those hearts. Number four and the number five, we're done. Number four. Try to begin with a positive uh, gesture. Try to begin with a gift, with something good, and be the better of the two. And remember what our Prophet wasallam said, hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. The true wasil, the true one who connects with his relatives, is not the one who treats the relative the way the relative treats him. If your relative is kind, you're kind. If your relative is mean, you're mean. No. The true wasil, wasal, silatul arham, the true connector is not the one who treats the same, but rather the one who connects when the other has broken off. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. The true connector, wasil, the one who does silatul arham, is not the one who treats the same. No, that's not wasal. But the one who, when your relative cuts off, you try to mend and you try to connect. That is the true Silatul Arham. And last but not least, brothers and sisters, if all else fails, then be selfish and do Silatul Arham for your own benefit. And this is completely halal and permissible. What do I mean by this? The last hadith we'll mention. Our Prophet wasallam said, Whoever wishes that Allah gives him a longer life and that Allah increases his money and rizq and that Allah saves him from an evil death. Now who amongst us does not want to live longer and live richer and die a peaceful death? Think about that. The three greatest worldly incentives that are possible to imagine. Whoever wishes that Allah gives him a longer life and more money, and a good death, فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِمَهُ Let him be good to his family. Hadith is authentic in Tirmidhi. 
And the Prophet why is he telling us this? Because sometimes all else, else fails and we just do it because we want more money. We want more rizq. We want more life. And you know what? It's halal. Why is it halal? Because we know that we're doing it for Allah and Allah will bless us with, bless us with rizq. In the end of the day, it is linked to Allah and it is halal. So if all else fails, be selfish for yourself. In this case, it's halal. And you say, oh Allah, I'm doing this because I trust you and I trust your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa I have iman that if I am the better person and I fulfill the ties of kinship, that you will give me a better life and you will raise my financial status and you will let me die a peaceful death. This is iman, isn't it, right? Because you're doing it because the Prophet ﷺ said so. So it's all halal. And therefore, brothers and sisters, it is permissible to use this as an incentive to connect with those who have cut off from you. And we conclude this hadith with a stern reminder brothers and sisters our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hadith is in sahih bukhari la yadkhulu al-jannata qati'ur rahim la yadkhulu al-jannata qati'ur rahim the one who breaks off the the rahim the family ties shall never enter jannah we seek allah's refuge from being amongst them barakallahu bikum fi khair azim allahumma ni da'in fa aminu allahumma la tad'alna fi hadha al-yawm dhanban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farajta wa la daynan illa qadayta wa la maridan illa shafayta wa la asiran illa yassarta allahumma aghfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabaquna bil iman wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghillan lil ladhina amanu rabbana innaka ra'ufur rahim اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فاشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه و وسلم وتسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وانعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين عباد الله ان الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا يذكركم ولذكر الله تعالى اكبر واقم الصلاه